everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Uh, ben and Alonzo here. Season two underway. We're uh, cover the first two episodes of Fargo here, waiting for Dutch and Before the Law. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good television show. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, I'm totally back on board. Although, as you pointed out, that that opening segment with the Ronald Reagan movie that is not a real movie. Yeah, the, the fake MGM Reagan movie. Like it didn't. It doesn't look right. Yeah. It didn't. It, just, it doesn't look like the way quality shows 19, mock a 1940s movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They didn't quite nail it. I'm. I'm I, I won't give final judgment until they bring around because whatever the ref to. this is a reference to. You know, got to come back. Now there were some funny moments of it, but it just didn't yeah. look right. And so I was, I, I you know, I I started the show two or three times and falling asleep. Nothing to do with the show. Sure. Trying to get an episode in at midnight. Mm. You know, and uh, but that. So I watched. I've seen that scene three times. Wow. Um, <laughs> and and. So, but it doesn't matter. The show, if, as soon as that scene's over, this is as good as television gets. Oh my God! Yeah, totally. So, so we're back in it's Brainerd, right, Minnesota? I guess. I guess. Well, yeah. Or we're is that where is, have we heard the same? I don't think they've mentioned. I don't the know. Town. Well, I think there might have been a title card, but we it, it's we're yeah. we're we're in Molly's childhood. So we're in Molly's you know. childhood. In fact, you see that's heartbreaking too, isn't it? Somehow <sighs> to see the mother see, sick, yeah, and it's just to see this young Molly, and then to get that. So her dad's a cop, which we know because that's right. Pete Carradine in season one, and here it's really well played by an actor. Patrick I Wilson, really like Patrick yeah. Wilson, and then uh, her grandfather, and then to know her maternal grandfather, mm -hmm. Ted Danson, back on FX, great as Arthur Frobisher on Damages, so great, as good a role as there's been, and he's back here, and and that's her, and that's he's a sheriff's deputy, her dad's a state trooper, and. So you're like, of course, and she's going to get raised by these two men. Right. Of course she's going to be a cop. Sure, like she had yeah. no, This woman had no choice. She was doing ride-alongs at seven. Uh, you know. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, so, okay, so we have the, the Gephardt uh, crime family. Gerhardt. Uh, Ger is it Gerhardt? Okay, yeah, Gephardt. sorry. Gephardt ran for president. Oh, right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, the Gerhardt uh, crime family, they've been running the show in this area for a long time, but then the, the Potter Familias has a stroke. Uh, which leaves a power void that Kansas City finds out about. And so they want to take over operations. Uh, he has a, a devoted wife played by Gene Smart, who is nobody's fool, no. and uh, very rightly in the second episode proposes that she take over because just she should. She, she knows she, all the people. She knows all the players. She knows how. She, we get in before we see Otto uh, Gerhardt have mm -hmm. his stroke, we hear her. Uh, Talking about the business, like right. you know right away. Oh, she's she knows she's got her hand. She knows everything that's going on. She is the cookie lion right. of Fargo right. season right. two. Let's just put it that way. So, and again, and they have like the lions. They have three sons uh, who all think that they should be taking over. Um, you've got the oldest, uh, who's played by the burn notice guy, um, <laughs> who is, uh, uh, Dodd Jeffrey Donovan. Yes, Jeffrey Donovan is Dodd, who is clearly going to be trouble. Uh, then there's uh, the middle one is. Uh, they all have strange it's names. It's like, is Dutch the middle one? No, not. The, Rye is the youngest. Rye is the youngest. And then uh, a bear. Bear, right. Bear. Dodd, bear. Dodd, Rye. bear, and Rye. Yeah, uh, is it, yeah. so, so bear they're, is, is. They're always eating this. What, challah. This piece of, like, Swedish kugel bread or something. Well, the, 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 well, they're very clearly German. I mean, German, Dodd, right. Dodd tells the oh, whole right, story about the. Oh, right, because he tells the World War I story. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right, yeah. Uh, and then Rye, who is the ne'er-do-well youngest son, played by. Akulkin, I always forget which Kieran. one. Kieran. Kieran, uh, and um, so in the, in the in the first episode, he is has been shaking down a typewriter uh, salesman for uh, gambling money owed to the family. But this guy's ship is about to come in because he can sell the new IBM Selectric. Totally, and he's like, "Are we going to be the sole distributor in the for the Midwest. whole Midwest?" Yeah. Yes, but he's so. But Rye has to convince a judge to let this guy to unfreeze this guy's funds. Which leads to the worst shakedown ever at a Waffle Hut, which then also leads to a mass slaying, including Rye, then getting hit by a car driven by uh, Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst, who is a, a hairdresser with uh, bigger plans than this town has to offer, even though her husband, Jesse Plemons, uh, Meth Clearly. Damon, as we called him during the Breaking Bad recaps, uh, wants to stick around and take over the butcher shop that he works in and he's, have a family. And he adores her. And, yeah. Uh, and and he's clearly a, a, a good guy. He is the Martin, but but un, he's like the Martin Freeman character in season one. Right. Sort of accidentally does something bad. Except Martin Freeman, you always knew, sort of had a cold, dark heart. Yeah. And Jesse Plemons. 
doesn't. No, yeah, yeah. He's, he's much kinder. Yeah, it, it's been interesting. I've, I've been talking to some people on, on Facebook about the parallels you can draw between the two seasons. Like, last season we had the, the deaf mute uh, uh, sort of, you know, muscle from mm -hmm. the mob, and now we have the twins who don't talk. Right, the twins, that's right, the twins um, who don't talk from uh, Kansas you, City. Exactly. You know, I think the, our new Malvo is, uh, is Mike Milligan, played by Bokeem Woodbine. Yeah, he, uh, he's so good. <laughs> oh, my God, he is so good. As the, the, the chatty psychopath. Um, Working for, he's the operations guy, but working for, uh, for Brad Garrett. For Brad Garrett, yes. Yeah. Very and they already, they already have some great scenes together. Yes, yeah. the, the, the ride in the back of the car. The the back of the car. Which <laughs> one's the claw? Never mind. <laughs> Why am I talking to you? <laughs> and the clothing is great, like Brad Garrett's coat. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, this, yeah again, Fargo rides a, a fine line of you know, they, they, they like to make fun of the, oh yeah, okay then, without going too bananas with That's it, right. I think. And then this one, they're also doing the God, the 70s were hideous and mm -hmm. awesome at the same time without right. getting too flashy about it. Because, again, this isn't set at Studio 54. This is the Midwest, and, you know, some of that stuff has trickled into the culture and into what people are wearing in the winter in Minnesota, but not all of it, you know. It's, uh, it also has the effect, and I don't know whether it does this to you, of really simultaneously making me think, I, I don't want to spend an hour in that part of the country right next to... Man, that looks like an enviable, simple life. You know? <laughs> like, wouldn't it be great to, oh, I would hate to live in that really nice, interesting place. That, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it seems like rustic and lovely. And then I think it's fucking cold. Like, for a, way too much of the year, I could not handle it. Cold and, like, and, and emotionally cold, right, too. Right, right. You know? But then there's this... Warmth, it's really, I don't know, man, it's well, good. It, I mean, it, it's the balance, because, you know, like, are you hanging out with the with the Gerhardts, or are you over at Molly's house? You know, those are two very different kind of universes going on. Um, so, yeah, so now we, so we have, those are, we have basically, again, the three interlocking stories. The, 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 the Gebhardt, uh, you know, succession. Gerhardt, Gerhardt sorry. <laughs> the, the, the Gerhardt King Lear business over here. Um, Richard Gebhardt getting more coverage today <laughs> than he got during his whenever campaign. he ran for president. Poor yeah. bastard. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got, you've got Kirsten Dunst and, and Jesse Plemons, you know, hiding Rye's body, and then you've got the cops. Uh, oh, and in episode two, also, we get Elizabeth Marvel as, uh, as Kirsten Dunst's boss. It was driving me nuts where I'd seen her. She's Heather Dunbar from House, yeah, of, House Cards. of Cards. That's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the very solicitor general, very deep bench of great character actors on this show again. Yeah, really. It's just man, it's it's good from start to finish. Those scenes at the Salverson house mm -hmm. where, with uh, with the mother battling cancer and the kid, and, and they're just they're so good. They're so good. Seeing young Molly is heartbreaking, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there have been thousands of cop shows. On television, sure. Uh, and in an era when I think cops justifiably are, are, are having a tough time, like this is a great cop show because mm. at least the, these are these are decent guys. Yeah. These are tough. These are guys are super tough, man. Ted Danson is tough, tough, tough when he stops that car. Sure, no. In both in both seasons of Fargo, I think they're they are the moral center always. Always right, and they are what and they are curious. Mm -hmm. They are interested in what's happening around them, and they're curious. I mean. Patrick Wilson, he doesn't just stop. I mean, maybe he's stopping just to get bacon, but something tells him, "Where's the butcher shop? Why are they? Ha What's happening? Why are they?" Yeah, 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 not, yeah. Know? The lights being on is a yeah, thing. Is a yeah. probable cause. And he in goes this in. Town. He sees Jesse Plemons. He's like, "All right, I guess it's okay. I'll just, I'll take yeah. some bacon." Yeah. Oh God, the fingers. The fingers. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, that all that whole meat grinding scene was just like. And so the, a, a number of sort of shout outs more strike me, uh, uh, Fargo. Movie show. Oh, outs. interesting. Here. Then. Oh, because yeah. of the, the meat grinder being meat grinder, like this. And then, the you know, I wrote wood down, chipper, but yeah. I didn't bring it with me. But there were like, th I thought three or four. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, but anyway, really, really, really. And also, just maybe it's that the villains here, to me, are more reminiscent of the movie Fargo mm. villains and those silent brothers, just the way everybody looks. Right. Um, anyway, great, great show. Can't wait for next week. Definitely. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs>